All right, so we've built a couple of tools. Now it's time to build something actually useful. But before we do that, there are a couple of house cleaning notes I've got to go over. First, the AIO Comet D library has been updated in three years, and that means there's a line of code that's a bit out of date. So if you get an error in AIO Comet D, specifically in the client.py complaining about an unexpected keyword argument loop, then just open the client.py file that Python is complaining about and remove the loop equals self dot underscore loop parameter. Second, I made some slight mistakes in the code, specifically when it comes to the config file. I've updated the code in the GitHub repo, and it should correctly read the config file data now. I'm sorry about that. So my goal with this project is to keep myself engaged with the market while I'm working full time. How do I do that? Well, I'm on Discord all the time talking to my friends, so I thought, why not build a bot that alerts me every time there's some kind of interesting IVR change in an underlying. So let's build TastyBot, an IVR alert and stock options utility bot that anyone can use on their Discord channel. What are we looking to do here then? We're going to fetch a watch list and parse the market metrics data. At market open, we'll note the opening IV rank, and after that, we'll continuously fetch new data and update the IV rank. If we see a change in the overall IV rank, or there's a change in the intraday IV rank, we'll alert our channel and let it know that the underlying is on the move. So how do we get started? I'm going to assume you have a Discord account. You'll head on over to the Discord developers portal and create a new application. Give it a unique and totally not trademark infringing name. In the left hand menu, click on bot and give our bot the presence and message intents. You'll also need to copy the token here. You'll need it when configuring the bot. Then go to OAuth2, URL generator, and click on the bot scope with the send messages text permissions. This will generate a URL which you'll visit and it'll allow you to invite your bot to any Discord server that you own. So for the bot itself, we're going to install the discord.py module with a simple pip install discord.py. For going through the code itself, we're going to start with the tasty commands module. This module is pretty self-explanatory. This houses all of the commands the bot will respond to. I won't go into too much detail here, but there are a couple of tricky things you need to know. First, this is what Discord calls a cog. I'm still unfamiliar with why it's called a cog, but needless to say, it's just a way to shimmy some OOP classes into the Discord library. Second, you'll notice that every command you can type in is preceded with an at command. This is called a decorator in Python. This just lets the Discord library know that the following method is a command that the bot will respond to. You can attach some parameters to the command decorator, such as marking a command as administrator only, hiding the command from the generic help query, and providing a customized message for said help query. There's also the cooldown decorator, which limits the number of times a command can be run in a specific period. In this example, we're limiting this command to one execution every five minutes by regular users. We do this so that the bot doesn't get abused and banned for flooding. There's also the tasks decorator. In this case, we're using the tasks.loop decorator, which will continuously call our command in a loop at set intervals. In this example, we're calling the fetch loop method every two and a half minutes. After that, we have an interesting decorator called the fetch loop dot before loop. As you can imagine, this block of code will execute before the tasks dot loop process starts. In our case, we want to halt the execution of this loop until the bot is ready to go. That's the discord.py command structure in a nutshell. So let's discuss tastybot itself. Since we're doing stuff with the tasty trade API, we'll pass it our TT API object. We'll also then need to create some discord.py magic to make this sucker run. First, we need to set our intents. In this case, we'll be creating a default intents set and telling Discord that we want to send messages. Next, we call the commands.bot.dunderinit to initialize the bot. From there, we'll run the bot with our token. Before the bot actually runs, though, it's going to call the onReady method. This method is called when you guessed it, the bot is actually ready to run. In it, we're going to create our tasty commands cog, add it as a cog to our bot, and then tell the cog to start running all the task loops we set it up for. Now that we have a bot, we can make it do things. Let's make use of the TT API library that we made a couple of weeks ago. Our fetch watchlist method will call the get watchlist API method. From there, we'll extract the symbols from our watchlist and use those symbols to call the market metrics function. Next, we have update watchlist. This takes the market metrics data we just fetched and basically parses it into a more readable format. We're not doing anything special here except filtering out symbols in the watchlist that might have bad or incomplete data such as VIX and slash VX. Then we parse a whole bunch of numbers and stuff them into a dictionary. So great, now we have all of the market metrics from our watchlist in a convenient dictionary. But we don't really care about every symbol in the list. We only really care if the symbol meets some criteria, and we want to know how the IVR has changed intraday. 
To figure that out, we need to assemble our alert list. Update alert list scans through our symbol dictionary for any IV that is at or above the elevated level that we configured earlier. If the IVR of the symbol doesn't meet the minimum level and it's already in the alert list, we delete it from the list. From there, we'll just assemble the dictionary that our bot will use to alert our Discord channel with. Of course, the bot has to send a message. That's where update alerts comes in. This method takes one parameter, only underscore new, and crafts a customized alert message for the channel based on whether we're messaging the channel with every alertable symbol in the list, or only symbols that have been updated since our last alert. Now, if we quickly go back to tasty commands, we can see in the fetch loop method that I currently have it configured to alert the channel with a complete list of alertable symbols every 15 minutes. But every five minutes, it'll alert only the symbols with changes. The rest of the update alerts method is quite literally just formatting a string to send to the Discord channel. Literally, all we're doing is checking the various inputs from the alert list dictionary and assembling a single line of information for each alerted symbol. Then we output it to the channel. So, to go over things again, once the bot starts, we start this loop. This will run every two and a half minutes. In this loop, we perform the following. Check that we're in active market hours. Fetch the watch list. Update and parse the watch list. Update the alert dictionary. Every 15 minutes, we do a complete refresh of the alert dictionary and post it to the channel. Otherwise, every five minutes, we only update the channel with symbols that have had a change in their IV rank since the last update. And that's it. The code might look a little overwhelming, but once you break it down into its component objects, it's a very simple program, and somewhat useful too. For example, TastyBot alerted us to a spike in Oracle. It spiked by over 100% intraday, so I took a small trade in it, and the next day, the trade came in for a tidy 50% profit. Not a bad way to take a win where you can. So that's the beginning of TastyBot and how to use the Discord.py package along with the TT API package that we created. We'll start exploring other things we can do with this bot and the packages we created in the next video, such as, you know, DX feed data. Before I go, though, I want to explain that this library I created is only for teaching purposes, to teach myself and to teach other cheesesteak for brains like me how to use the Tasty Trade and DX Feed APIs. If you're looking for a more complete library, check out the unofficial Tasty Trade SDK package, which is also open source. The link's in the description below. It's far more professionally written and ready to use than anything I've put together. I just wanted to throw that out there because the work these folks have done has been great and I'm not trying to pretend to be some amazing original developer here. I'll be honest with you, I barely comprehend the code that they've got going. They're really a league beyond me, so tip of the hat to those folks. Anyway, if you want to see more videos like this and a deeper dive into how to program this kind of stuff from scratch, give me a like and subscribe, leave a comment, hit me up on Twitter at OneLotJason, and join us in the Discord channel. Until next time, trade small, trade often, rock on.